It's an honor to be here. It's an honor that Block Report TV just, just is always jamming on the one. It's really, really cool. Is Raj G and what is his importance to music and especially the LA music scene? I think that what Raj G means to just as far as like the progression of culture when it comes to the Africans that live in LA, it's kind of like more of that. I don't know if I could call it a scene. Like that developed later. But what I can say is being over there on Vermont, 81st in Vermont over there, by the house where everybody lived in that neighborhood, there was such a life of music. Music was coming out of the windows into the street and it made the streets a safe place to be. And it made, that, that block became a creative vortex of some kind. And, uh, I remember being there with my homegirl Malika, watching, you know, dances, problem solving, troubleshooting, and Ross G. This is when he just DJing, you know, like, and, and then doing like just being real creative, like as far as cutting up, you know, his mixes. He was very creative as, as like he was doing. He was still still doing what people know him for now with the with the uh, technology, but he was doing it with the vinyl, you know and um, just in real time. Not recording, just searching through music, using music and using, um, he understood the value of vibration. You know, he, it, a lot of people, you know, it's really, some people rap be real strong. And then when it comes down to their arts, they don't really apply all of the things that they, uh, their ideals. Oh, you know what I'm saying? It's like, everybody got ideals. You know what I mean? But then there's some people that really strive to apply their ideals because they don't want nothing but that. They're not gonna set, settle for less in their life. I feel like Raz G's one of them kind of people. And um, the way I even know of him was through um, the black, the African liberation community, you know what I'm saying? And we had something called the African Think Tank and it was run by um, a sister, good sister named um, Tamiko Gilbert, also known as Watts 1965, also known as Safa at the time, because she's been naming it. She has many names, she names herself, okay? And when she pleases, she names herself, okay? And they ran an open, a people's library, and she had a stamp with a date on it, and you had two weeks to jam on some books. And this is how I know Rasaji, you know? And they had a, a function called the Black Hand Side, and um, Brother Samir, who called me out to come represent there, Brother Samir was, would be doing art. You know, uh, he'd supply the art. It'd be like a gallery, like just, <laughs> it was incredible. The Black Hand Side was where there was a musical expression of, uh, in dance and the music, so like the kind of stuff we'd be spinning. It's all, it's, it's all things for us to gain strength warrior music but but he was very big on showing that this ain't nothing new you know and the musical aesthetic he was very a, a, a purveyor of culture you know what I'm saying and so, and and it being outside something living outside you know so not just so much a scene but just like us being Africans holy uh, you know and there was a lot there was a few of us that was really keyed into making our present moment something very special because that's why we're alive, you know? Um, I feel honored to know him. I've known him since I was a teenager, you know? Uh, and he, and I, remember, I remember the first time I heard about Gary Bartz was, he asked me, you know, I think I might have been about 17. And he asked, have you ever heard of Gary Bartz? You know, we in Malika's car, also known as Eagle Nebula. I saw her today for a long time. Is one of the original thinkers on what we call the beat scene, or we call it like this Afrofuturism, like Respond LA. This, 
the ghetto sci-fi. The first time I heard ghetto sci-fi was from Malika because her brother Julian loved to write science fiction. So he, they, so they used to build and they came up with this genre. I remember I heard this when I was like 15. You hear about ghetto sci-fi. You know, because it's like a sense of humor, like, yo, I love, he writes sci-fi. Like, yo, Julian, he would, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Julian Bedford, you know what I'm saying? Shout out, you know what I'm saying? But, oh yes, it was like, it was like a, it's hard to, it's hard to describe. It's like, it's like what Ross G provided. There was a vibe, there was a feeling that was developing where we understood that the magic of willpower you know, that's, I feel like that's the African mind's greatest gift. That's the most potent uh, technology we have is our willpower. You know what I'm saying? When we will something to be, there's some things that can really, really go down. But you got to really will it, right? You can't, no fear, right? You got to be a will, the purest. I feel like that's how we did all our, you know, publish all of these texts and collections of these archives that we have, you know, with Dudley and I and some other shit, we trying to add as much as we can to it with the vinyls and things, you know. And Ross G was very prolific as well. Some are very prolific as well. Many people, you know, are put, are doing what they have to do with their willpower to uh, make sure that our culture is uh, materialized, you know and not just be something that we dream that maybe one day we can get together, right? So there's, there's many things. I feel like um, the things that, that I got a chance to see was some of the things where, you know, the world's greatest thinkers, you know, um, when it comes down to cosmology and African consciousness, I feel like we were applying that through our music. We were applying those things. You know, the community of what's there, we were actually, and, and because we had been raised on the laps of people who checking that kind of information out, it was natural for us. You know what I'm saying? It was natural. It's just, it wasn't like we was thinking that, oh, we need to program an experience. You know? It was, it was a spiritual thing. It's the part that wasn't, it wasn't no communism thing. It was, it was spiritual musical, you know, black, like grooving in the street. Are we dancing? There's so many people like in Lamert today, you got a chance, to, you got a taste of what it was like to grow up there. Well, the people you saw just dancing and like conducting energy, Brea dancing, you know, just Ja or Ra, like, you know, they, these are the, the, the cats that really were uplifting the meditation you know, I mean, this is some LA stuff, man. You had to be around to really see it. You know, AK, like Joseph Lombard, all these people, Micah Nine, Abstract Rude, you know, Ross, and, and then all these people are here. Jametta Rose, man. There's all these. <laughs> it's, it's almost incredible for me when I listen to lectures by, you know, Brother Jacob, the Dr. Jacob Carruthers, is like, we're, it was like that kind of level. It was like the, the demand of spirituality to be a part of our transformation, that we are spiritual people, that we are spiritual beings. And music is our, it's, it's, it's like the currency of our spirituality, yeah. You know, music and arts, these are the currencies of our culture and, and spirituality and we need to build it's like you know how they say you want power you had to print your own money right well we have to do that in every way yeah our own spiritual currency our own monies you know and i feel like today we were printing our own spiritual currency you know why you say that because everybody who who perform means it they mean it it's not just, oh, I'm rocking the set. These people, are, these people are conducting energy through the air. You know, they're conducting the, the, the ancestral energy on purpose, because that's their purpose. And that's the printer, right? It's almost like you load paper and it come out. 
is an ancestor. You're the printer, but what comes from you is not yours. Comes to you. It's for our culture, it's for us to have culture. Because so many times we get to hear that we don't have culture, right? So many times we hear that, right? We slaves. We the slaves, right? And, and we didn't got no culture. And you know, if we was from somewhere else, but no, no, we have our dances too. When somebody passes away, we do things. We come together in the street and we put out tones, you know, like Michael Nye, you know, there was intonations done in a group, as a group of people, intonations as a group of people. There was paint being sprayed as somebody is toning into the air. This is culture. This is why we look to African motifs. It's because it's the activity that's attached to the motifs. It's not the motif itself that's hip. It's what the motif symbolizes, right? And so we're to, to energize the symbol of his mural being placed up there with our sound and tears and breathing and dancing. You know, all of that's getting absorbed into the paint. Straight into, you know, ink, uh, ink of one jamming. You know, ink, 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 ink of one dude, killing it. And he's the one that did the other, you, you know about his work. You know, he does, he, he's the one that did the Panther mural on Crenshaw. Yeah, he, he's one of the classical artists. We are classical in nature, I feel. I feel like black folks, the starting of the of this scene, this scene is tens of thousands, if not billions years old, you know. This ain't not, this is our canvas, you know, through time and space. And we find ways to heal ourselves and reunite with one another. As much as people, you know, yes, as much as we take each other out, there's, we spend, we make time finding solutions to, to, to reunite with one another too. To start over again with one another. We do that too. And then we make songs for that. And when there, there's a dance for that, there's a song and there's a feeling that go with it, that's ours. And Lamert has something like that. You know, you know, Dwight Tribble, that's my dad's best friend. When he get up there and sing, it's a ceremony. He sings for the ceremony. And Ross G, he was part of that ceremony. He's part, he is, he is now even transformed the ceremony. And we all taking it very serious right about now. Because we need ceremony. Outside, in the sun, outside. Wow. Because we're solar powered. And the sun's taking care of us. If we can allow the sun to take care of us more and more, instead of like looking toward the, that's why I let my phone die for three days, man. <laughs> I need to recharge, you know. These are rays. Our perception, this, these, these emit rays, you know. So it, we gotta print our own money. Right? We gotta print our own culture. We gotta print our own spiritual currency. Our own money. Ancestral ducats is what I like to call them, you know? And culture is the ancestral ducat. It's so that we, it's, it's, it's almost like the 401k for when we're not here no more, right? The children have something that they can know what to do. So I, I feel like Ross G, it's beautiful to show up and, and witness that that feeling was really real. That it wasn't, it like, like it was really real. Like it felt, everybody really felt that way. And it's like, I can only imagine, it's like how you know the brothers in the Bronx and stuff like this, you know, outside. Cool Herc, you know, like these people. I could say, maybe I, I, could, I know what that feeling is to be outside with music. You know, if it wasn't for that, you know, it'd be a little different. It wouldn't be the same. You know, we wasn't weird no more. You know, 
Music was our weapon of choice. It's our, it's, it's our weapon of choice. And culture is our weapon of choice. 